it, it seemed like you had this party boy, you know, undeniable superstar uh, attitude. And it, it did seem to sort of spiral in, in, in like you became your own worst enemy in some regards. And eventually you had this sort of wake up call where you decided to become a very different person. And that that's very rare to, to you know, I interview a lot of people and it's very rare someone will do such a 180 and become so different at a, at a middle point of their life. And that takes a lot of real soul searching. And I was just wondering, sort of what brought that on for you first of all it's uh you know i will say i think the, the genesis of all of it would be obviously meeting who's you know the woman who's now my wife mm. um, um she was sort of the beginning of it uh i and look she was the first time that i really uh if i'm being honest loved anything more than either myself or the wrestling business. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the first time for me, I experienced real love. And then of course we had, you know, uh, a child and, you know, and when first found out that she was pregnant, it, it now things, it was the first time that something was bigger than myself, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest. Um, and the idea of this human being, this little human being turning out like me, and uh, it scared me to death, <laughs> to, be perfect, to be perfectly honest. Um, and, and that honestly is what did it. It was just something that, that uh, and again, I mean, I don't want to beat anybody over the head with my Bible and go too far into, into my faith. But obviously that had a, a great deal to do with it. But that honestly is all sort of the same thing. It was believing and having something bigger than myself. And that was, to me, it was just about, you know, really full unconditional love for something that I'd never had before. And mm -hmm. this person being 100% dependent on if he was going to turn out to be any type of redeeming man, mm -hmm. he was probably going to look at his dad first. And it just made me uh, look in the mirror. And as you say, do a lot of soul searching and it is not fun. It, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, uh, an incredibly humbling, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm thing to go through uh, when you realize and you start to pick yourself apart and look at the things you can improve on uh, the list was uh, long to say the least you know credit to you for, for being a man enough to do that it takes a lot of effort and um, you've really stuck to it uh, that, that's quite clear because I remember when you first came back to wrestling a few people like mm, is this an act like people didn't really know how to take you from all the interviews I've watched uh, one of the things that sort of built up that character that people had a, an idea about you was being a part of the clique and this is a group of wrestlers who were kind of notorious <laughs> really the bad boys of wrestling who seemed to have a, a, a hold on wrestling in two different organizations but the irony was is that your sort of little brother in all of that was Triple H and my meeting and most wrestling fans meeting of Triple H where we really became familiar with him was as your sort of right hand man if I had said to you back then, you know, one day this guy is going to be the most powerful man in wrestling, how would yeah. you have took that? I don't know. I'd have said the most powerful man in wrestling is driving me down the road and taking me up to my, yeah. <laughs> and taking me up to my uh, hotel room when I'm, I'm half out of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, again, it really has been, uh, you know, an, an amazing journey, um, to say the least. Uh, mm. And it is. Look, we we were real life friends, um, and obviously he did. You know, I don't know. He showed me the ultimate friendship by again being there for me when I was not, you know, at my best. And um, because of that, there's just been a, you know, a I don't know, a lifelong devotion to our friendship with one uh -huh. another, and um, and that's why even now that again me taking on he, the, the, what I'm doing now is, is doing my best to, you know, to pay him back for everything that he did for me, you know I mean? Yeah. When, when I needed it. And, and, and that's me doing everything that I can while he needs it. Um, and that's the process we're in now. But again, no, I would have never look, uh, when I left with my back injury, it was one way. And then I came back and, you know, he's, you know, I'm, I'm now, one of the groomsmen at his wedding with, uh, you know, Stephanie McMahon. And, yeah. and then of course his, you know, his rise to, as you say, being one of the most powerful men you know, in, in, in the business altogether. And, mm. 
but they're still we're still you know he's still honored to me you know to, you know all oh, he's you know he's we're still friends there's there's an aspect of that where i can at least be that real aspect of his life that nobody else really knows about and that's the one thing that myself and kevin and kid um you know can at least share with him on the side that not many other people can and most importantly that he can't i think that's the biggest thing for me is um is being a refuge for him away from uh ironically enough uh the wwe and away from the wrestling business as a whole yeah so when you talk about your role now helping him it's 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 building the nxt brand and and bringing through the new wave of wrestlers and passing down that knowledge and hopefully helping him create future superstars uh what is it like to be a teacher now because i remember you being taught uh, i remember seeing videos of you being taught in the run-up to wrestlemania 12 from your old teacher yeah well look um it's it's gone it's evolved you know uh a lot even in the time that i've been here i when i first came here uh to nxt it was just to in a coaching role and it was it mostly just to again to be with a certain group of guys once they felt like they got to a certain level um and help them i don't know better understand storyline and psychology and again helping them understand that the moves were the moves, but they could really just play a backdrop to a bigger part of a story. Mm -hmm. um, and then it slowly evolved into, <laughs> you know, um, taking over NXT UK. And then obviously at one point, uh, you know, writing and producing NXT and then writing and producing NXT UK. And then now sort of what it's culminated into now, which is again, for the most part, uh, running ru running both brands uh, obviously with a a great team that he put in place around me mm -hmm. um and having less time so to speak to coach individually um but try to grow both brands in a way that again does what we're supposed to do here which mm -hmm. is prepare um the nxt superstars to be the wwe superstars of tomorrow and, and on into the future how, how receptive is um, Triple H to feedback from you? Because like, I, I feel like there's so much control that he has now over the brand and and a lot of people are going to have so many different opinions of whether he should zig or zag and obviously he's going to trust you a lot do you have a lot of conversations like that or are you too focused on what you're doing often to just let him get on with it well, look, look, when, when he was when he was here uh on a regular basis um i certainly always we had a great deal of back and forth mm -hmm. um and i think again i feel like he always knew that he would get the truth from me um mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that certainly now in being in this position you mm -hmm. begin to understand that you may not always be getting the cold hard truth you might be getting what people think you want to hear and you having to discern what's best and that's one of the things i think that he's taught me you know i, I guess the most is that there are times again that i can lean on him and ask him something i know he'll give me the best answer um and i know it'll be the truth and 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 again whether it's good or it's bad he knows he can tell me that and it's better overall for both my growth and the growth of the brand um i like to think that's what i gave him at the same time the one thing that i will say is that i don't and i'm continuing to learn i don't have the vast knowledge uh that he has because he's had a, you know like he said it's like sean i've had a decade head start on you you know i mean he said it's you know yeah. um it's one of those things that you know i've almost forgotten how long he's actually been doing this and doing it at a high level mm -hmm. um and that's one of the things that i find myself appreciating more and more um is again the depth of knowledge and innovation that he has from a production standpoint and those are uh, some of the things that I hope to obviously glean information from him 
throughout the years as we continue to go forward in this. Uh, as um, someone might have seen, uh, it was it was sad to see that he sort of had retirement, in-ring retirement forced on him in the last year. Obviously, uh, a lot of people feel like you went out the perfect way, you know, the perfect match. Everything was amazing about your final goal, but he didn't. He wasn't so lucky. How do you think he's going to cope with not being able to scratch that itch mentally? Well, I'll say this. I... From all I can tell, the, everything for him has been put into perspective. And and one way or another, I believe that's one of the greatest lessons of life. It will teach you one way or another um, about perspective. It's just up to you, the individual, to receive it. Um, and he has done both. And I think he understands that um, the career that he had is second to none. There's so much to be proud of. There is a future um, from a business standpoint of so much more to fulfill um, that has nothing to do with the ring. And the most important, I think, again, is his family. I think he's understood the balance that needs to be there and that when everything is said and done, you know, uh, you know, those those daughters of his and his wife, that's the most important thing in his life. Mm -hmm. I think he's having the time to be able to enjoy that as he should. Um, and, and, and look, I, I think when, for all of us, when you get that realization and it finally sinks in, yes, this job, very important to, to all of us, but it is still a job when it's said and done. It's still something that really is not based and grounded in reality and family is. And so when it comes Again, as I like to say, when it comes to nut cutting time, reality always takes precedence. <laughs> I like it. Um, and obviously mentioning uh, him and, and the click, uh, very sad to see that we lost Scott Hall in the last year. Um, how did you guys as a friendship group sort of uh, deal with that and cope together? Just that, together. Um, you know, I, I... So it's one thing you kind of always wonder... Um, in the years following, will it stick? What was it all as special as you thought it was? And when it, and when something like this happens, to find out that it that it all is, and that it's still, I don't know, we're still that group of guys that bonded so well together on the road in this line of work together, and twenty plus years later we can still come together and it's still, I don't know there. Yes. There was an unbelievable sadness there, but the overwhelming joy of all of us understanding and appreciating and valuing the friendship that we had and seeing how important it was. I think that was the most positive thing in all of this for us. It was sad and tragic to lose Scott. Um, but I can just say for me personally, I don't know. It was, it was so great to find out that, I don't know, that we were all still going to be there when uh, it's coming to the end. Mm. And uh, I don't know. I don't think you can ask for much more of that. Um, again, for all of us to be able to be there with each other, be able to say goodbye and, and I don't know, uh, and then to be together to, to mourn and to comfort one another afterwards, that's pretty special. And I think that's the best you can get when it comes uh, to the finality of death.